there's a new reality television program, and it's called the Blue. I should probably write it in blue, but it's called the Blue Forehead Room. Blue Forehead Head Room. And what they do in this reality television program, and, and you'll have to bear with me because this show probably wouldn't be that interesting to watch, but it's interesting to predict what happens. What they do is they take a room, we'll call it the blue forehead room, and they, let's see, that's, that's kind of a top view of the room. And let's say there's a door here. None of this is relevant to the actual problem. This is the door, right? No, right there. And what they do is they get 100 perfect logicians to sit in this room in a circle. So they're all, you know, sitting in a circle in this room. Now before the game even starts, before they even enter the room the first time, the logicians are told two things. They're told one, that at least one of you, at least one of you has your forehead painted blue has your forehead painted blue at least one of you has your forehead and maybe you know they they all get their foreheads painted so that you know obviously if you're the only guy who has your forehead painted and you know but you just don't know what color it is so all of them have different color foreheads right or we don't know but all they're told is look you know obviously i've painted your forehead and at least one of the people in the room that you will enter will have their forehead painted blue and then they're also told that as soon as soon as you deduce that your forehead blue that your forehead is blue that your blue you need to leave the room you need to leave the room and what's going to happen is, and it's, it's very important that I set this up properly, they're all outside of the room. No one's inside the room. And let's say they're blindfolded. And while they're blindfolded, they essentially you know, have the thing uh, uh, p- you know, painted onto their forehead so they can't see the paintbrush or anything. So they really don't know what's on their forehead. And they just have to use, and, and then after that, they're essentially allowed, they all enter the room. Right, and they all sit in a circle like this, so that they can all look at each other. And then the foreheads, and then the, and then the, and let's say when they enter, the lights are off, right? So the lights are off, and then what the 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 protocol is is that the lights will be turned on, and then they can all look around at each other. There's no reflective surfaces; they can't look at it, you know, look into each other's eyes and try to see their reflection. No tricks like that. There are no mirrors in this room. Nothing like that. All they can do is look at each other. So let's, you know, just as an example, let's say that this is me right here. As soon as the lights get turned on the first time, I'll be able to look at all the other people in the room, and I could see. I mean, it'll be pretty obvious to me if anyone has a blue forehead, right? I, maybe that guy has one. That guy, I don't know, right? And I could see them. I can't see my own forehead. And what happens is then they will turn off the lights and the 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 way they're going to do it is you have to leave the room after you have realized that you have a blue forehead. So for example, let's say I enter into the room and you know, because I'm a perfect logician, I see things that make allow me to perfectly to do deduce that I have a blue forehead. Then what they're going to do is they're going to turn off the lights again. And then if I know that I have a blue forehead while the lights are turned off, I would leave the room. And then when they turn the lights back on, I'd be gone. So there would be no Sal here. So you know, let's say there were 100 before, then there would be 99 guys sitting in the room, right? As soon as I, I, as soon as I realize I have a blue forehead, when the lights get turned off, I leave. Right, and just remember, these are perfect logicians. So everyone in the room, and, and 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 not only are they all perfect logicians, but they all know that everyone else is a perfect logician. So everyone is also told, and this is true. Everyone, everyone, is perfect logician, which means they have infallible powers of logic. Perfect logician. Logician. So my question to you, so you know, just remember, I have you know, each of these perfect logicians, we set them up outside of the room, paint their foreheads, they're blindfolded, they have no clue. Then we have all of them walk into a dark room, sit in a circle like this, 
And then what we tell them is, as soon as you realize that you have a blue forehead, as soon as you have a blue forehead, you have to leave the room. Now my question to you is, let's say that we've actually painted everybody's forehead blue. What happens? So remember, we've, this is what we've told each of the people. right? As soon as you realize your forehead is blue, you leave the room. And now I've just asked you, what happens? You know, the, the producers like to really play with these logicians. They've actually painted everybody's forehead blue. So you know, you know when, when everyone goes into the room the first time, what's going to happen? You know, let's, 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 say this is, let's say I'm one of the logicians. This is me right, right here. As soon as I open my eyes, I'm going to see 99 other fellow logicians with blue foreheads. So that's, that's just kind of, and then, you know, maybe I can somehow deduce something about my own. I, you know, I don't think you can. And then the lights will go off. And then, you know, if I haven't deduced anything about my own uh, blueness of my forehead, then they'll turn the lights back on. And then maybe some other guy will have left. I don't know. Or, or maybe not. And then I'll see the same 99 guys again. And that'll just keep occurring until something happens. And my question to you is, what happens when and why? And that's the, well, I'm, I'm thinking whether I should give you a hint right now. Well, let me tell you this way. That's the problem. You should be able to solve it. And just so you know where this came from, this I, if I remember correctly, I think this case was on a computer science exam I had at MIT. So it's, uh, you know, just so you know, this isn't just for fun. This, is, this could actually, you know, this, well, I, I, I don't want to go into the, uh, into the uh, into, into all of the applications that this type of problem could apply to, because that by itself would be a bit of a hint. But let me, so if you don't want a hint, turn off the video now, or pause it. If you do want a hint, well, I'm about to give it to you. So my hint is, my hint, and remember, turn this off if you don't want a hint. But the hint is, what happens what happens when there are less than 100 people? So you know, I gave the, the situation where we have 100 logicians. But this problem is actually a lot easier if you try it with a smaller number. Anyway.